In an earlier video, I mentioned that substituents behave differently when they are in axial versus equatorial positions. And that becomes clear when we look at SN2 reactions of halogenated cyclohexanes. Let's examine these two stereoisomers of 1-bromo-4-tert-butyl cyclohexane. This isomer reacts much more quickly than this one when treated with a good SN2 nucleophile, like cyanide. To understand why, we need to examine their chair conformations. Let's first remember that tert-butyl groups are locking groups. They have very strong preferences for being equatorial, so we'll start by placing those T-butyl groups in the equatorial positions. Notice that they're on wedged bonds in our structures, so they must be angling upward in our chairs. For the first isomer, the bromine is also on a wedge, so up. It's at this carbon, so up means axial. The other isomer has the bromine on a dash, so down here implying that it must be equatorial. Okay, so, so far so good, but why would the equatorial bromine react more slowly than the axial one? To understand this, we need to think about the molecular orbitals involved in the reaction. Both of these reactions involve the HOMO of cyanide, a lone pair on the negatively charged carbon, and sigma star CBr. If we visualize where that sigma star orbital is, outside the CBr bond with the largest lobe by carbon, we can see that they're here and here. In the case of the axial Br, there's nothing particularly in the way of that acceptor orbital, so cyanide can approach without much difficulty. But with the equatorial bromine, the cyanide would have to approach like this almost like a plane landing across the runway of the cyclohexane ring. As the nucleophile approaches, it would have to pass directly between the two substituents on the ring at these locations. Here, they're both hydrogens. That's hard for the nucleophile to do. It's like those, subs those substituents are blocking access to the sigma star orbital. This is a general phenomenon Substituents on a cyclohexane ring must be axial in order to undergo SN2 substitu substitution. We see a similar difference in reactivity if we try to perform E2 elimination on our two substrates. The first isomer undergoes elimination quickly, while the second is much slower. This has to do with the spatial requirement of the E2 elimination that the H being deprotonated and the leaving group must be anti and periplanar. When the bromine is axial, there are hydrogens next door that are both in the required orientation. But with the equatorial bromine, the only hydrogens are here and here, neither of which is anti. Without the required orientation of the H and the leaving group, the elimination can't occur. Again, this is generalizable. In order for E2 elimination to occur from a cyclohexane, the leaving group must be axial and have hydrogens that are anti and periplanar to it. 